This is Lucy Larson, Manager of Museum Experience and Interpretation at the San Jose Museum of Art. SJMA is proud to present the series, Artist of the Week, featuring artists from our permanent collection. The interviews you hear were conducted in December 2006 and January 2007. We hope you enjoy this series and subscribe to SJMA's podcast. For the Richard Mizrak podcast, we interviewed Peter Littman, a geologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, San Jose Museum of Art board member, and collector of Richard Mizrak's photographs. Leading off the podcast, you'll hear the voice of Robert Mann of the Robert Mann Gallery in New York. Robert represented Richard Mizrak for over 20 years and also spent time traveling with him in his van while shooting the Desert Canto series in the 1980s. I am Robert Mann, and my business is the Robert Mann Gallery, located here in New York. I have uh, worked with the artist Richard Misrak for over 20 years. Initially, what I worked with back in the 80s was the Desert Canto series, which was an early body of color work that Richard did in the American desert, largely the deserts of California, New Mexico, Arizona, those areas. And on the surface, the photographs, many of them are just breathtaking. They're just beautiful. Whether they're dealing with the desert terrain or, in some cases, mountain mountain views or, or even some man-made structures in the landscape, they're just very visually compelling, very, very beautiful. But that's just on the surface. The, there is a subtext, and there has been a subtext with Richard's work for many, many years. It's environmentally conscious or sensitive agenda. Uh, Richard has always been very preoccupied by the way man uses and abuses, in some cases, his own landscape. And in some cases, in the desert cantus work, that theme is not so cloaked. In other cases, it's much more subtle, but it's there. And I love that right from the get-go when I was exposed to Richard's work, that you could look at a beautiful photograph and there could be something more than just the, the landscape. There could be a whole message, perhaps even story behind that picture, something that would convey a serious concern and something that you know should be addressed. Well, I'm Peter Lippman. I'm a uh, research geologist for the U.S. Geological Survey, but I have a long interest in contemporary art. And as a geologist, having lived in a number of places, have, have always been interested in the art of wherever I live. And when I moved to California, or moved back to California a dozen years ago, at first I assumed that really all art that I would go look at was in San Francisco. Gradually, uh, I began to come to San Jose and saw some really wonderful exhibitions. And one of the first ones I saw was an exhibition of a photographer that I had never heard of named Richard Misrak. Well, my understanding is, is that uh, Misrak, who lives in Berkeley, California, uh, was on vacation in a high-rise hotel somewhere in Hawaii, I'm not sure where. And this was the view from his balcony that he uh, took uh, and used for a whole series of photographs, some of which show the shoreline, the sand. Some, there's some spectacular ones that are all sand and uh, just people's footprints, but uh, quite a series with, uh, with small figures in the water with or without the shoreline. And in a way, kind of ironically, it's uh, almost a counterpart to a wonderful series he uh, has done of the Golden Gate that are taken from the deck of his house in Berkeley under a variety of weather conditions and times of day, but always just from his own uh, balcony. Early on in our relationship, we would travel together. When I first started to exhibit his work, I actually went out and spent a couple of summers driving around the southwestern desert with him. I got to watch him work, and it was particularly unique experience to have a friendship with Richard and to be able to watch how he crafts his art. He was very devoted. He would get up at the wee hours of the morning to catch the light at a particular time and then go out with his, his view camera. I would watch him. He's just so focused and, and dedicated to getting that one particular picture, which you know often he didn't get. 
I had no concept of what was involved in, in getting one singular image. And when you're working with equipment such as an 8x10 view camera, it's, it's truly challenging. It's not forgiving equipment. When you're wake, working with 8x10, it's different than like a digital camera where you can just randomly shoot off many frames and edit down to one later on. You're working with sheet film. It's very labor intensive to load that film, which he was doing in the hot desert inside uh, his van, which he had blackened to make it into a virtual dark room. You're very careful, I believe, when you're shooting 8x10 film because it's very expensive and you don't want to just randomly take many shots and then later you're really trying to edit in your mind and ultimately edit in, in the camera. But certainly there are pictures I am sure he took that weren't as successful as others and of the dozen exposures he might have made, perhaps there was only one successful piece or one that he felt was truly successful and warranted going further with to, to make a print. The first exhibition that I saw in the museum of Ms. Rex in know, 1997 or 8, somewhere's about there, was very unlike the, the picture that's here now. It was all about the American desert. Uh, he was fascinated with the American desert and presumably still is, but did an enormous body of work called Desert Contos. And, and the exhibition here had a wonderful title that really encapsulates what Ms. Rex work is about. It was called Splendor and Misdemeanors, I believe. And his work is simultaneously beautiful about the natural landscape and has got this edgy concern about the, the impact of man on it. And uh, this, this picture that has nothing to do with the, the desert that we're, we have on display now, one has to wonder why this person is so solitary. And I, I believe this whole series of ocean and shoreline images is called On the Beach, although this one is untitled. And On the Beach was the title of a, of a novel that was published, I think, in the early 1950s. I read it certainly 30 or 40 or 50 years ago. And it was about the aftermath of nuclear holocaust when nobody survived in the Northern Hemisphere but there were a few people on the shoreline in Australia who survived. And I, I, I have to think there's that undertone, that edginess to this, this beautiful scene that on the face of it is a single swimmer having a good time in a very beautiful large ocean. But uh, Mizrak's uh, images are, are more complex than they appear at first. your thoughts and your dreams want to be